2022 Latin American Music Awards air live on Telemundo from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas on Thursday, April 21st. And it just so happens that we have our very own Latin music expert, Liz, and our music expert, Quam, <laughs> in the house to tell us about this year's biggest nominees, the likely winners, and so much more. Quam, why don't you get us started uh, and tell us a little bit more about the Latin AMAs. Thanks, David. Yes, as you mentioned, the Latin American Music Awards are airing this Thursday on Telemundo. Uh, the Latin AMAs celebrate the latest and greatest in, uh, in talent in Latin music. And Bad Bunny, as you mentioned, is leading the pack with 10 nominations. But some other top nominees include Jay Cortez, Carol G, and Jay Balvin, of course, because between him and Bad Bunny, they're just like cheat codes for uh, every award show they're nominated in. Uh, you can see the nominees and so much more just by saying Latin American Music Awards to your Xfinity voice remote. But now it's time for Liz and I to give who we think are going to be some of the big winners for the night. And so starting off with Female uh, Artist of the Year, Liz, I want to get your opinion. Who do you think is going to win this award? So for me, Female Artist of the Year, and this is not based on anything other than my own bias and the fact that I think she is so chill and cool is Rosalia. And I see you didn't choose Rosalia. What's going on? I did not choose Rosalia. <laughs> and Rosalia, if you're watching this, I am so sorry. I love you. We're meant to be together. Trust me. No I'm lo perdones. But... <laughs> no way. Don't forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You didn't. She didn't release an album this year, but you know who did? Oh, Callie no. and Chuyas. And I loved her album so much. It was just so remarkable. Um, I heard her music in the past, but I was never like fully like, you know, you know, drawn to her like that. But with her new album, I just could not give it the, give the award to anyone else but Callie. So I had to go with Callie. I, I'm not mad. Like, I'm going to be 100 with you. This is so hard trying to choose a winner because all of this music is fantastic. And all of this music is stuff that, you know, we're listening to. And depending on your mood, if you wanted something like, you know, vibrant and get you going like party mood, or you want to something chill like Rosalia. I mean, just, she's so smooth. She's so, I love her style. Everything about her is just chill and smooth. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see on, on Thursday, the 21st. Next year, Rosalia, I'm voting for you. I love Moda Mommy. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> the next category that we're going to be focusing on is top male artists. And this time I'll go first. Uh, I think, I don't think he's going to win, but I would love to see him win. Uh, artist Faruko. Or Faruko. Faruko. Oh, Faruko. 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 Yes. Yes. I love yes. this song. Peppas. That is like my anthem right now. Uh, Liz, who did you choose? Well, well, great minds. That's, you know what they say about great minds. So I also chose Faruko. Um, oh my gosh. Two different, yeah, two different, two different <laughs> images. Um, I just love everything about Faruko recently, right? So one, he's, he's um, from Puerto Rico. So Huepa, Boricua over here. Um, and so are three of the other five nominees, which is awesome. So again, can't go wrong in terms of the music is amazing and everybody has a different vibe. But, you know, what I love about Faruko recently is even though that song Pepas is huge um, and people are coming to his concert, he is talking about how he is not in that headspace anymore. Right. And so he has um and decided not to perform that song at his concert wow. and literally gave everyone the option and said now's your time to go i'm happy to give you a refund um i'm not gonna sing this song it just does not represent me anymore um because wow. i don't know if you know about what the song actually represents but it's all about partying and having a good time and pepas are actually pills right so it's about drugs mm. and um, and that lifestyle. And he's saying that he, that is not his life anymore. He has lost his family um, and uh, has lost the things that were closest and meant the most to him. So I am, I really am praying for him to win. Um, I think this would be such a great, uh, a great testament to who he is as an artist and that he doesn't necessarily 
have to live that lifestyle in order to be on top. And so, yeah, for all those reasons, and because he's amazing and I love Faruko, um, I chose Faruko too. <laughs> That's incredible. I have like now like a newfound respect because I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know that so often I don't really translate the songs. I'm just like vibing, I'm like, yeah, this is a good song. The beat's hitting. Uh, but yeah, you know, just seeing that how he made that that change, that's actually you know really, really commendable. You know, I think a lot of artists actually, you know, do that, especially artists who, like you said, lost family or even friends in um in the industry to, you know, drug use and trying to steer away from that. So all right. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're both for it. Farouko, you should definitely win. Uh, last category, song of the year. Uh, I had to go back to my girl Callie with her song Telapisha. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I hope I am. Uh, um, tela, <laughs> Telapia. Telapia. Oh the my one. god. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I need to work on my. You're Spanish. doing great, um, Kwame. You're doing great. You don't have to lie to me, Liz. Okay. No, <laughs> I know it's I'm good. good. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're gonna make me blush. Yeah. Uh, but this song is <laughs> this song is my jam. Going back to you know, like what I was saying about Cali, like this this entire album was amazing, and this song in particular, you know, it just it's, it's so I just love like songs that are like have like really chill vibes and kind of like a psychedelic feel, and this song really just does it for me. And then also it kind of went viral on TikTok, so uh, just kind of like a two for one there. And yes, I really hope this gets song of the year. But Liz, who is your choice? Yeah, and I don't disagree. I mean, again, she's awesome and um, would not be mad if she did win. Although I think you and I both talked about it. I think we know who is going to win, but we still have our hopes on uh, on um, our own picks. And I chose, again, Faruko. I did choose Pepas because for all the reasons that I mentioned before, it is a very catchy song. Um, People know it. People know that beat. And you don't necessarily have to speak Spanish or understand Spanish to really um, fully appreciate the music, the beat. You don't even need to know what it's saying to know that it's just a whole vibe and it's a mood. Um, and especially for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, I really hope for Faruko's sake, for his family, um, for him and his record and his label, that uh, he can prove that, you know, that he can come through this and... Um, and still be on top with amazing music. So yeah, Faruko Pepas. And yeah, Pe yeah, Pepas was my was my second choice. Uh, but like I said, you know, I had to go with my girl Cali. But now with this new knowledge of Faruko and like you know what he's you know standing for, I would not be mad at seeing him win either. So I just want, now I want Faruko to win all the categories, even oh, female artists. Just give, just give him every <laughs> award. I love that. Let's do it. I feel the same way. <laughs> David, uh, are you excited for any of the uh, this, the music that you're going to be hearing on Thursday, or are you familiar with any of the artists? I know you're like a sl slight music connoisseur. Your your music's pretty eclectic, so it is. I mostly know like some of these names, like uh, Rosalia, just because I know you're obsessed with her. Quam. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to pick her up, but. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. What I just loved so much about that conversation is I had no idea about Faruko and what he's been through and uh, like respect so much that he's decided not to sing this song that he that he doesn't uh, relate to anymore. And I feel like that's been kind of a um, a theme as of late, like like especially artists with a lot of longevity going back and reexamining the lyrics and songs that made them famous. And deciding it doesn't align with who they are anymore. Uh, the Rolling Stones stopped playing Brown Sugar in their concerts uh, just within the last year or two um, because of references to slavery and drug use and sex and just really insensitive lyrics. Uh, now, what, 40, 50 years later, I, they've been <laughs> on tour for so long. Um, and Paramore stopped singing Misery Business, which was the song that made them famous and was like, a like keystone of their concert experience um because of lyrics that are suggest like some slut shaming and they didn't feel that it was respectful to uh women and so they've stopped playing it too it's their most popular song so mm -hmm. totally respect that Faruko mm -hmm. has done that and uh yeah i feel like now i have someone i can root for since i don't know much 
but and I know Bad Bunny because like who doesn't? But I only know I really only know Bad Bunny because he wrestled at WrestleMania once, and he has a song called Booker T about a wrestler <laughs> named Booker T. <laughs> but you know, I guess however you access the world of Latin music, it's all good, right? <laughs> yeah, as long for as you get sure. there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you can check out the Latin American Music Awards destination that Quam uh, and Liz just spoke about by saying Latin American Music Awards into your voice remote. <laughs>